Crash landing its way onto the GameCube in 2001, Pikmin quickly became one of Nintendo's most bizarre and beloved properties by many, taking control of a space captain who's canonically the size of a thimble. The Pikmin games see the player traversing through a dangerous planet with an army of aggressive, multicolored carrot creatures. Throughout their travels, the space explorers and their obedient plants have encountered many enemies which would like nothing more than to devour or crush everything in their path. Today we're looking at the biggest baddies of all, the bosses. And we're going to see which ones are more of minor nuisances and which ones are the truly threatening foes. I'm Kifinosi with 1UP Binge and this is Pikmin Bosses, weak to powerful. Let's start off with some ground rules. Firstly, we're only going to be looking at the three main games in the Pikmin trilogy. Spin-offs such as Hey Pikmin or the Pikmin Adventures sub-game in Nintendo Land are too different to rank fairly with the other games. Secondly, many of these bosses appear in different games with varying levels of difficulty. For the sake of this list, we're going to be judging them in their prime based on their most powerful appearances in the series. Lastly, let's define what we mean by powerful. For this list, we're going to be looking at these bosses' defensive stats as well as their offensive abilities. Since a lot of these enemies can kill multiple members of the Pikmin army in one fell swoop, we'll also be taking into account how easy it is for the player to evade said attacks. With those guidelines slotted down in our Piklopedia, it's time to unearth our rankings. At the very bottom of our list, we have the giant bread bug from Pikmin 2. This boss is essentially a larger version of the regular bread bugs, which are harmless bread-shaped enemies that drag objects into holes in the ground. While the giant bread bug can't hurt the Pikmin, the Pikmin also can't hurt it by normal means. Instead, the Pikmin and the giant bread bug engage in a battle of tug of war over the treasure. If the Pikmin are successful, the bread bug will receive damage after hitting itself against the pod. Do this a couple of times and the giant bread bug becomes a giant bread corpse. The fact that this enemy has low defense and literally no offense makes it an easy choice for the bottom of this list. Next up on our list, we have the Mamuta from Pikmin 1. While this creature does appear in Pikmin 2 as well, it's only classified as a boss in the first game. Out of all the bosses in Pikmin, the Mamuta is the only one that can be inadvertently helpful to the player. Instead of killing the Pikmin that are attacking it, the Mamuta will slap them into the ground, causing the player to pluck them again. While this can prove to be an annoyance, this can actually prove to be a benefit if you have leaf or bud Pikmin you're looking to upgrade into flowers. The Mamuta does manage to edge out the giant bread bug due to its higher defense and the fact that it, you know, can actually harm the player if they're too close to its attack range. Since it's more of a nuisance than a threat for the most part though, the Mamuta isn't a boss which will cause you much stress. The next entry on our list is the Puff Stool from Pikmin 1. It says a lot about a boss when the fire geysers that surround it are arguably more of a hazard than the boss itself. A giant fungus with stubby little legs, the Puff Stool is a cowardly mini boss who will run away from the Pikmin if swarmed. After a few steps, the Puff Stool trips, causing Olimar to throw Pikmin on top of it. Once the Puff Stool reorients itself, it lets out a puff of gas which turns the Pikmin into mushroom Pikmin that help defend the Puff Stool. With that said, the attack is pretty easy to avoid and the Mushroom Pikmin can be turned back to normal if fought by the regular Pikmin and called off by Olimar. So it's not that big of an issue. Overall, the Puff Stool isn't that much of a threat if you have enough Pikmin with you to take it down quickly. Bowling into our next spot is the Armored Cannon Beetle from Pikmin 1. A fully grown adult version of the Armored Cannon Larvae, which appear in Pikmin 2 and 3, the Armored Cannon Beetle is the only boss in Pikmin that appears twice in the first game. Both encounters are essentially the same with one difference, that being the landscape. The Armored Cannon Beetle has one attack, which is taking a large breath and speed spitting out a rock in a straight line. Its body is surrounded by a protected shell, which can only be opened up by throwing Pikmin onto a blowhole on its face. Once opened, Olimar can lead the Pikmin to the back of the beast and swarm it for damage. While the rocket shoots is large, it's pretty easy to navigate around if you're careful with your Pikmin. Since its weak points on its back and the creature is pretty slow to turn around, the Armored Cannon Beetle doesn't have much of an offensive strategy when it's being swarmed, making it a pretty easy boss fight. The Gulix from Pikmin 1 is up next. A giant blue liquid blob, the Gulix slowly moves around and tries to engulf all the Pikmin in water to drown them. This is a hard boss to rank because, technically speaking, the Gulix has the best defense out of any boss in the first game, being tied by only the final boss. However, the reason it ranks so low is because if you bring an army of blue Pikmin to its arena, the Gulix has no offense. 
nor defense and can be wailed on repeatedly until its demise. The Gulix does pose a legitimate threat to red and yellow Pikmin who have no way of attacking it. Also, because of its high defense, if you don't have a substantial amount of blue Pikmin in your arsenal, there's a very good chance your army won't be able to finish the job by the end of the day. With all that in mind, if you prepare yourself accordingly and know what Pikmin to use, the Gulix is a very easy boss fight that won't cause you any trouble. Hovering into our next spot, we have the Ranging Bloister from Pikmin 2. This large jellyfish looking creature appears several times throughout Pikmin 2 and is enthralled by shiny objects. Namely, the red and blue lights which extend from Olimar and Louis's helmets cause the Ranging Bloister to follow the spacemen closely. While one character distracts the creature, the other must sneak behind it and throw Pikmin on its tail. As an attack, the Ranging Bloister extends its tentacles to latch onto the Pikmin, but this is fairly easy to maneuver around. The Ranging Bloister doesn't have high defense, but it can slowly regenerate health if left alone, so it's beneficial for the player to take the creature down quickly. All in all, this boss probably won't give you much of a problem if you use your Spacemen and Pikmin wisely. Crawling into our next spot is the first boss in our rankings from Pikmin 3, the Bug-Eyed Cromad. Appearing twice in the Garden of Hope, this creature is basically a larger version of the Hermit Cromad, with two big bulging eyes that hang from its head. If the player comes too close to the Bug-Eyed Cromad, it'll lunge from its hole and attack any Pikmin in sight. The only way to attack the Bug-Eyed Cromad is to throw Pikmin onto its eyes. If the player has winged Pikmin in their army, they can do this without going in the attack range of the enemy. Once both of its eyes are injured, the Bug-Eyed Cromad will flip over, leaving itself open to being swarmed by Pikmin. Considering the Bug-Eyed Cromad has low defense and can potentially be easily avoided, this can be a pretty easy boss fight if the player knows what they're doing. Up next, we have the Armored Maudad from Pikmin 3. The first boss that the player encounters in the third game, the Armored Maudad is a large centipede creature protected by a hard outer shell. The only way to break through its exterior is with the use of the Rock Pikmin who can smash it. The Armored Maudad can crawl up the walls out of reach of the player, but its position will be given away by the tree bark and debris which falls from the walls in the ceiling. To attack, the Armored Maudad lunges forth at its prey, which can easily be avoided due to the few seconds it takes to position itself. While the Armored Maudad does have a relatively high defense, its overall predictable nature makes the fight a cakewalk for any players who were already familiar with the first two Pikmin games. The first of many Arachnorb enemies on our countdown, the Shaggy Longlegs from Pikmin 3 stomps into our next spot. Appearing three times in Pikmin 3, these creatures come in black, white, purple, and golden colors depending on the area in which they reside. The Pikmin can climb the legs of this beast in order to remove its hair, causing damage to the Shaggy Longlegs. While the Shaggy Longlegs can stomp on a Pikmin to crush them, if the player brings a lot of troops to the battle, it won't get much of a chance due to constantly shaking the Pikmin off its body. The Shaggy Longlegs has the lowest defense of any member of its family, tied only with its bald variant in mission mode. With the exception of its gold version, the feet of the creature have small range and won't crush that many Pikmin if caught under it. Right above its hairy brother lands the Baldy Longlegs from Pikmin 3. As stated in the last entry, this is a hairless variant of the Shaggy Longlegs that only appears in the game's side modes. It has the same stats as the Shaggy Longlegs, but it traverses across more of the in-game area, making it much harder for the player to deal with. This also means that when it shakes the Pikmin off of its body, they're more likely to end up in a hazardous area or next to a dangerous enemy. If we're ranking bosses based on difficulty alone, the Baldy Longlegs would probably rank a bit higher still, but since its stats are the same as its hairy counterpart, we're gonna rank them side by side. Commanding its way as our next entry is the Scornet Maestro from Pikmin 3. This is another boss which is difficult to rank since technically speaking the Scornet Maestro does not attack the Pikmin nor the player. Instead it commands an army of 100 smaller Scornets to do its bidding for it. The player must avoid the onslaught of smaller insects and attack the Scornet Maestro, which does have high defense to its credit. Since the Scornet Maestro isn't really a threat on its own, we can't really rank it any higher than this. However, due to its high defense and efficient use of its army, we can't in good conscience call it a weak boss either. Swooping into our next slot is the Behemoth Fozbat from Pikmin 3. While posing more of a threat than the Armored Maudad, this boss fight isn't so much hard as it is complicated and time consuming. Residing in the Dark Caverns, the Behemoth Fozbat is invisible until the Yellow Pikmin create an electrical current to turn on the lights. 
In order to do this, the rock Pikmin must break down barricades and the other Pikmin must build bridges in order to reach the electrical wires. The beast becomes stunned when the light shines on it, leaving it open to attack. While it does have high defense, the Behemoth Fozbat's only deadly attack is sucking up to five Pikmin at once into its mouth. It can also spray dust onto the Pikmin, but this only causes a minor distraction for the plant creatures. The Behemoth Fozbat also releases its offspring, which eat the Pikmin, but the small creatures are slow and weak, causing little issue for the player. If the Behemoth Fozbat flies off to a wall to take a rest, it'll regenerate a small bit of health, but it can only do this once. Overall, this is a fun boss fight with a lot of moving pieces, but the Behemoth Fozbad isn't exactly the most powerful foe. The water wraith from Pikmin 2 drips into our next spot. This boss stalks the player throughout every sub-level of the submerged castle hole, but can only be fought in the final area. This large water creature traverses around on two large wheels, which can and will crush any Pikmin in their path. Much like the Ranging Bloister, the Water Wraith will only target the active player, which can be a useful strategy to keep your Pikmin troops from being squished. During the boss fight, the Water Wraith can only be attacked by the purple Pikmin who stun it. Once stunned, the Water Wraith turns from liquid to solid, leaving it open to being swarmed by every Pikmin. Once its health is depleted, the Water Wraith will run around in fear looking for another spot to reconstruct its rollers. If the purple Pikmin stun it again, it'll turn solid once more, leaving itself once again open to being attacked. While the Water Wraith can certainly be deadly when it's using its rollers, its fixation on the active player and low defense make it a boss which can also be taken care of safely with the right strategy. The next spot on our list goes to the Man at Legs from Pikmin 2. A robotic member of the Arachnorb family, the Man at Legs acts quite differently from its other relatives. Instead of its primary focus being crushing the Pikmin with its feet, the Man at Legs instead shoots lasers at our heroes using internally built guns found in its body. To avoid the crossfire being shot at them, Olimar and Bluey must hide behind walls which will block the bullets from hitting them and their Pikmin. After unloading its ammo, the Man at Legs will stomp around angrily, leaving it open for attack. In order to successfully defeat the Man at Legs, the player must be quick and stealthy, ideally with many flower Pikmin in their army. This battle puts the protagonist's reaction time and navigation abilities to the test, and can result in many casualties if Olimar and Bluey are not careful. Digging our way over is our next entry, the Burrowing Snagret. A boss in all three games, we're going to be basing our ranking on Burrowing Snagret's stats in Pikmin 1, where it had the highest defense. In each game, the Burrowing Snagret's attack strategy remains similar, digging into the ground and popping up briefly to eat the Pikmin. Chewing the Pikmin in its beak, this gives the player an opportunity to save their Pikmin from the creature. However, the saved Pikmin will likely lose their flower petals and be reduced back to leaf Pikmin. Since its primary strategy is to dig into the ground and pop up unexpectedly, the Burrowing Snagret can be a tricky enemy to fight, especially in the first game where there are two of them in the same area. Unleashing both of them at once makes the fight even more difficult since you have to look out for, you know, two giant snake birds to avoid an attack. It's not hard to see why the Burrowing Snagret is one of Pikmin's most iconic boss fights, considering how memorable and challenging it is to fight. Rolling into our next spot is Empress Bolblax from Pikmin 2. Appearing twice in the story mode and once in the challenge mode, Empress Bolblax is the female head of the Grub Dog family. She has one direct attack, which involves rolling from side to side to crush the Pikmin. Hitting the walls also causes rocks to fall from the ceiling, which can also crush Olimar and Louie's army. In her second appearance, and also in challenge mode, Empress Bolblax will have higher defense and also be giving birth to Bolborg larvae, which will also attack the player. If she rolls over one of her larvae, she will crush and kill it, same as the Pikmin, showing that she's just as ruthless a mother as she is an opponent. The player's best strategy is to stand in front of Empress Bolblax and throw Pikmin preferably of the purple variety, at her face while she's stationary. Since Empress Bulblax won't eat the Pikmin, this does make the player relatively safe, aside from the falling rocks and Bulborg larvae. Still, her high defense, multiple appearances, and ability to crush many army members at once, if you're not careful, make the Empress Bulblax a formidable enemy. Moving on to another boss that's fond of rolling around, the segmented Crobster from Pikmin 2 comes in next. Found in the depths of the Cavern of Chaos, this one-armed crustacean creature's body is protected by a thick outer shell. Curling up into a ball, the segmented Crobster rolls after the protagonist in an attempt to crush them. It can only be stopped by bumping into a wall. 
which causes rocks to fall from the ceiling. However, hitting the wall also causes the segmented cropster to land on its back, leaving its belly open to an assault from the Pikmin. This boss fight forces Almar and Louie to be both quick and observant in order to avoid being crushed by both the creature and the boulders. The segmented cropster doesn't have the highest defense, but since its weak spot is only open for a short time frame and must be hit while avoiding debris, this boss still manages to put up quite a challenge. Our next spot goes to the sand belching mere slug from Pikmin 3. One of the largest enemies to appear in the Pikmin franchise, the sand belching mere slug has the highest defense of any enemy in Pikmin 3. It has two primary attacks, which includes spitting rocks around the area and creating a giant sinkhole to suck the Pikmin down into its mouth. The latter attack can be countered if the player throws a yellow Pikmin holding a rock bomb into the mouth. While neither move is particularly dangerous in the beginning of the fight, the Sand Belching Mirror Slug does become more effective as its health depletes lower and lower. While not the hardest boss in the series, the Sand Belching Mirror Slug does prove to be quite powerful due to its attack range and really high defense. Popping up into our next spot is the Pileated Snagrit from Pikmin 2. Appearing twice in story mode and once in challenge mode, the Pileated Snagrit is the more mobile family member of the Burrowing Snagrit. While its attack strategy is similar to its Burrowing counterpart, the Pileated Snagrit is more of a challenge due to its much higher defense and increased height, making it harder for the thrown Pikmin to reach the head of the beast. Purple Pikmin have the opportunity to stun and make the Pileated Snagrit bounce, which certainly can be useful, but tricky to pull off due to the Pileated Snagrit's height. Overall, out of all the snake bird creatures a player comes to encounter, the Pileated Snagrit is definitely the most challenging and powerful. Coming in next is the Beady Longlegs from Pikmin 1. Olimar's introduction to the Arachnorb family, the Beady Longlegs also appears in Pikmin 2 as a mini-boss. In the first game, the Beady Longlegs is a strong and formidable foe with high defense and quick movement. It's actually better to not bring that many Pikmin into this battle, as the Beady Longlegs can stomp many of them with the soles of its feet. Its body is also higher up than many of its family members, meaning the only Pikmin that can reach its weak point are the Yellow Pikmin. If that wasn't enough, the Beady Longlegs will also increase in speed while it's being damaged. Despite being the first Arachnorb, the Beady Longlegs stands out as being one of the most powerful enemies in the series. The toughest member of the Arachnorb family though, the Raging Longlegs from Pikmin 2, is up next. Sporting the highest defense of any boss in Pikmin 2, this Arachnorb also has the largest feet of any of its family members, which can crush many Pikmin at once. Also, if left alone for a while, the Raging Longlegs will slowly regenerate health. Despite this, the Raging Longlegs has a really large body, which makes it easier to attack than many of its family members. Unlike many other Longlegs, this also means the player doesn't have to position itself under the base of the enemy to attack it. Since it does have a high defense and can crush many Pikmin if given the opportunity, this does put the Raging Longlegs high up on our list in terms of raw power. In terms of pure difficulty, however, the BD Longlegs does beat this beast out. Crushing its way into our next spot is the Quaggled Myroclops from Pikmin 3. Resembling a large spider with a chunk of land for a body, the Quaggled Myroclops goes on a rampage after the rock Pikmin damage a yellow crystal on its head. Much like an Arachnorb, the Quaggled Myroclops stops around the map, which not only can crush the Pikmin, in which the Pikmin can drown. In order to defeat the Quaggled Myroclops, the player must attack its toes, causing it to fall to the ground, then swarm its head with the Pikmin. After wailing on its head for a while, the Quaggled Myroclops will extend its tongue and attempt to eat the Pikmin, so the player must call their squad off in a timely manner. Once destroying the crystal on its head, the Quaggled Myroclops will become even more aggressive, rampaging around the board and using its body to crush anything beneath it. This could cause Pikmin extinction in one fell swoop if the player isn't careful. Because of its high defense and deadly offense, the Quaggled Myroclops proves to be one of the strongest foes in the Pikmin trilogy. The first final boss on our list, the Plasm Wraith from Pikmin 3, morphs into our next spot. One of the strangest enemies in all of Pikmin, and that alone is saying something, the Plasm Wraith also proves to be one of the most challenging. Being comprised of cellular photoplasmic mass, the Plasm Wraith can only be defeated by splitting its mass from its core. It initially only has one attack, which is stabbing a Pikmin rapidly with its needle arms. While that may not sound like much, the Plasm Wraith can stab up to 20 Pikmin in quick succession with this move. Later on in the fight, the Plasm Wraith will release elemental plasms, which create hazards that can only be destroyed by a specific type of Pikmin. If the player fails to destroy these hazards, the Plasm Wraith will absorb them back into its body and regenerate health. With so many moving pieces and a highly powerful offensive attack, the Plasm Wraith definitely ranks among the harder bosses in the series. 
The Bronze Medal of Power is awarded to the final boss of Pikmin 2, the Titan Dweevil. Much like the Plasm Wraith, the Titan Dweevil uses elemental hazards to attack the player and their Pikmin. These come in the form of four weapons, which the Titan Dweevil also uses to protect its body from Pikmin attacks. These weapons are the Flare Cannon, the Comedy Bomb, the Shock Therapist, and the Monster Pump. For the first stage of this fight, the best strategy would be to use yellow Pikmin, since the electricity is an instant kill unlike the other hazards. Once the weapons are knocked off of the body, they'll fall to the ground and might get in the way of the Pikmin fighting the boss. Once stripped of all its weapons, the Titan Weevil has no counterattack and can basically be wailed on until its defeat. Due to its high defense and skilled use of weaponry, the Titan Weevil gets the honor of being the hardest boss in Pikmin 2. The Silver Medal of Power goes to the Smoky Prog from Pikmin 1. This is an optional boss, which can only be fought in the first 15 days in Distant Spring. Depending on the player's skill level, that may be a good thing considering how deadly this beast is. The Smoky Prog doesn't really attack so much as it, well, moves around. Its body is surrounded by a poisonous gas, which will instantly kill any Pikmin that come in contact with it. Upon hatching from its egg, the Smoky Prog will make its way over to the landing site and uproot any Pikmin still on the ground. Olimar must defeat the Smoky Prog in order to bring anything back to the landing site that day. The Smoky Prog has relatively high defense and is undoubtedly the deadliest creature in the series. Upon its defeat, the Smoky Prog leaves behind a pearl which produces a hundred Pikmin, which may or may not make up for the casualties sustained in this battle. (laughs) It's easy to lose your entire Pikmin army in this fight very quickly if you're not extremely cautious. Finally, the Gold Medal of Power goes to the final boss of the first Pikmin, Emperor Bulblax. Emperor Bulblax also appears as a boss in Pikmin 2, but is significantly weaker than he is in the first game, where this Emperor has the highest defense out of any enemy in the Pikmin series. After clearing a path in the final trial area, Olimar encounters the Emperor Bulblax, buried in a large area of sand. Once he emerges, he'll chase the Pikmin down and lick them with his large tongue. This does give the player an opportunity to stun Emperor Bulblax, as throwing a yellow Pikmin holding a bomb rock onto its mouth will cause damage. Once the Emperor's health is halved, it'll introduce a second attack, which involves jumping up high and smashing its body down on Olimar and his Pikmin. Many Pikmin fans consider the Smoky Prog to be the harder enemy due to its already deadly nature and appearing earlier in the game when the player is less prepared for such a battle. However, due to its extremely high defense and still very deadly offense, we personally believe Emperor Ball Black stands as the most powerful enemy in the series. That does it for our list, but before we sign off, let's plant some honorary medals to our cast of creatures. The Darwin Medal would have to go to Mamuta. Considering this creature's attack is more helpful than harmful to the Pikmin, we have to wonder why it doesn't change its strategy. The Wrath Medal is given to the Burrowing Snagret. Considering its multiple appearances throughout the series, and even appearing as an assist trophy in Smash Brothers, it's quite clear that this strange snake bird is out for revenge. The Gluttony Medal is a hard one, as so many of the bosses in these games are out to eat the Pikmin. However, ultimately, we'll give it to Emperor Bulblax. Seeing as to how he visibly drools upon seeing the Pikmin, we're also giving Emperor Bulblax the Pride Medal, since he clearly is prideful in being the biggest grub dog around. The Sloth Medal is awarded to Gulix. This enemy doesn't really attack so much as it moves around and tries to just consume the Pikmin. The Envy Medal goes to Scornet Maestro. This particular boss wishes it could command its army of 100 Scornets, as well as Alf, Brittany, and Charlie command their 100 Pikmin. The Greed Medal is given to the Titan Dweevil. This beast loves treasure as much as the giant breadbug, and will hold on to all that it can, as well as Louie, in order to protect itself. The Lust Medal is awarded to Empress Bulblax. This is due to how often she gives birth in her second boss fight. We're willing to bet that this creature is not asexual. Let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the moralities of the characters in your favorite games. Thanks for watching!